Hello, my name is Michael Strauss. I'm the Senior Vice President of the American Astronomical Society. And I wanted to uh, take this moment to describe a little bit about what sharing a session for the upcoming virtual meeting of the American Astronomical Society will look like. Uh, I'll start by thanking you all for uh, volunteering to chair the session. And again, this is gonna describe some of the practical aspects of how that will work in practice. So uh, this is just a big picture um, uh, notion of, of what you need to know as a chair. And of course, we'll go into details going forward. Um, you will have a list of, and maybe have already received a list of the, the speakers in your session. Um, and um, we ask you to reach out by email to, the, to each of the speakers, reminding of them of the session and asking them to log in perhaps 15 minutes beforehand. There'll be a practice session to make sure that all connections are in place. And you and all the speakers will receive emails a week, a day, and an hour before your session, giving you access information to the session. We'll show you how that works. Um, unlike uh, AAS meetings where we're in face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, speakers are not uploading their uh, talks beforehand, but rather uh, all the sessions are using Zoom, and each speaker will share their slides via uh, Zoom in turn. Um, while the session is going on, there will be technical staff available uh, and you can uh, communicate with them ver via the chat window within Zoom to help with technical problems or anything else like that. As we'll describe later, the audience will not have access to chat, but rather will be asking questions via uh, question and answer function within Zoom, again, separate from chat. As session chair, you'll be responsible for keeping the session and each speaker on time. And it's crucial, of course, that you keep to the listed schedule. And we'll describe that in a bit. And then again, the uh, question and answer period will be done uh, uh, via the question and answer function. All the session uh, attendees, the, those who are not speaking, uh, will be muted, uh, and, but they will write their questions into the question and answer window. And as session chair, it will be your job to select which questions to ask. You will verbalize those, read them out loud. So again, you and the speakers can unmute yourselves, but the audience members themselves are muted throughout. So just uh, a, a few things to get your, um, get your head in the right place. Uh, with, there's um, things that you wanna do in preparation. You want uh, to visit the website with uh, various training and resources information. Um, make sure that uh, you have a good internet uh, or telephone if you're using telephone connection uh, for what you're doing. Make sure that you're in a quiet uh, and comfortable place that you'll use throughout. Make sure that you're familiar with Zoom, which is what I'm using now to record this session. Uh, make sure that you're able to log on to the AAS website. Make sure that you have familiar, familiarized yourself with the abstracts of all the talks in your session. And um, uh, if you're listening to this webinar, you're already, you're already um, attending one of the speaking training webinars uh, uh, listed below. Um, so uh, to log on, the, the instructions that are written here are for uh, all meeting attendees. Uh, you'll sign on to the virtual meeting portal using your AAS username and password. For those who are not AAS members, we'll have a separate username and password for the purpose. Uh, the, uh, the link is, is there, my.aas.org slash services slash AAS236. Uh, you, as a chair, you are also a, um, a meeting attendee, and so we'll be logging on that way. But for your session itself, you will log on separately, which gives you the direct access uh, to the slides and uh, allows you to uh, unmute yourself. And you'll get a separate email for your session only, uh, which you will need to uh, keep that straight. We'll describe that a little bit further uh, going ahead. So this is what it will look like when you first enter the uh, the the meeting portal uh, as uh, you are chairing a, a scientific session, and so you'll notice in the uh, upper left there um, the scientific oral sessions will be a link that will will take you uh, into those again with a special link that you have as session chair. I think it, it will take you directly there, but you can see that there's links to to various other um, other um, um, aspects of the meeting that you can take take. Uh, uh, advantage of. So uh, I am, some of this is repetitive, but uh, the responsibilities as chair, as chair, and those of you who have uh, chaired AAS sessions in the past or been to AAS meetings and, and seen it uh, go forward will be familiar with this. Uh, you're going to get a list 
and maybe have already received a list of the speakers in your session, um, um, including their contact information. And one of the things that will ask you to do is to, is to uh, again, contact those individuals. You will get an email from um, the AAS meetings. It will look like no reply at zoom.us that will uh, give you the, the detailed link uh, how to access your session. Uh, the speakers will get a similar link. And again, everybody, speakers plus uh, US chair are expected to check into the session about 15 minutes prior to make sure that all connections are in place. Um, and a, a key thing to keep in mind is that uh, people will be coming from a variety of different time zones. All the times are listed in Eastern Daylight Time, so make sure that you have the time zone straight. Um, for each talk in turn, you'll uh, introduce the, the um, speaker, to give their name, their institution, their talk title. Um, Again, the chat window will be the way that you will communicate between the presenters and yourself and the technical support that you'll have to resolve any problems. But the question and answer window will be the, uh, the questions from the audience. And uh, it, is, it will be your job to, to read those questions out loud. One of the things that a chair uh, of a session is always responsible for doing is thinking of a question or two to uh, start any discussion. Um, um, it, it will occasionally happen that there will be no questions from the floor. Uh, and um, rather than just letting the crickets uh, uh, chirp, you want to be prepared to ask a question to start the discussion. So uh, I already mentioned that there will be an email uh, to you um, about how to uh, access your session. And again, each presenter, each speaker, and the session chair will uh, receive a private link to access the special session. This is not to be shared with others. This is for you and, and similarly uh, for the presenters. And that's what you will click on to actually access and get into uh, your, your, um, your special session yourself. So uh, we've already mentioned uh, that uh, each session will have a technical co-host whose job it is uh, to, for all the logistics, uh, you will be the other co-host um, and so the, the two of you together will be running the show. Uh, each session will be recorded to me uh, and made available to AAS members after the fact. Um, again, 15 minutes before the session starts, that technician will be working uh, to make sure that everybody's connection is good and that basically everybody's ready to go. And so it is really important for that, what's called a practice session 15 minutes before people show up uh, in advance. If, if, you, if somebody appears to be missing, uh, send an email to meetings at AAS.org uh, and they, have, they will basically send somebody whose job it is to try to track down any individual who's not there. I already said um, that, um, that, well, let's skip this next thing. If, if there's any problem with navigating the session with sharing or otherwise, the technician is there. Uh, again, the chat window will be the key way to communicate with the technician, but you can also reach them at this email address, AAS236 at warpspeedtech.com. So um, you've probably used Zoom um, uh, already quite a bit, but um, it it is worth keeping in mind that you want to want to access a Zoom either through the a web browser or through the app, and um, uh, each participant really needs to make sure that their 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 Zoom is basically ready to go. One one detail because each person will be sharing their slides in turn, and so what one what they see what the audience sees is is the same thing that the that the uh, speaker sees the the keynote presenter mode or the PowerPoint presenter mode is not going to be available unless you've set it up with double screens or something like that. Um, so we recommend that speakers, uh, if they're reading notes, for example, have those printed out or again available on some other, other screen. So um, here's what you and, and the speakers and the tech help will see uh, uh, for the screen sharing. So again, what, this is not what the audience will see, and the audience uh, will not have the opportunity to share the screen, but for each speaker in turn, uh, they will unmute themselves and then click on the share screen button, the green button on the, on the bottom uh, to, to share uh, the specific window that they wanna show. And what that then does is brings up a, a, a window or a, a choice of windows of the various things that might be on your, on your laptop to select um, the screen that, that you want to share. You click on that, click the share button, 
and then uh, then the talk starts um, and and off one goes. Uh, at the end of this, of course, one wants to go to the top of the screen and click the sh uh, stop share button. Um, you'll notice that um, uh, there's a small clock that's associated uh, with uh, at the various very top. That is the only clock that's available. It's pretty small. And of course, when a speaker is in speaking mode, they're not going to be paying close attention to that. So you as the chair have a, the additional responsibility of, of maintaining and keeping the time. And so um, let's, um, we'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Um, again, I mentioned already that there's a chat window. This is the way that you can communicate with the, with the um, tech support and also with the speakers. Uh, so the speakers will see this, you will see this. It's because you've logged in in that special way that you will have, you'll, you will uh, be able to do this. Uh, so you could reach out to the tech support and say that there's a problem. This is also the way you can reach out to a speaker and say, you've got one minute left, four minutes in a five minute talk uh, is up. The separate window called Q&A, questions from the audience will appear uh, there. And that, of course, the audience and the speakers and yourself uh, will see that. So after each talk, um, you, the speaker needs to, um, 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 well, at the beginning of each talk, each, each speaker wants to uh, unmute themselves. They can, um, if they're presenting and want their face to be seen, uh, they can uh, turn on their video. But of course, at the end of their talk, they want to mute themselves again, and of course, again, stop sharing their screen. So uh, at, the, um, at the beginning of the session, you want to, um, it's your job to start things off. Of course, um, because the audience is muted, um, they, they, we won't worry about, about background noise for them, but all speakers who are not up yet should, uh, should, should mute themselves and turn off all, all background noises. Um, so to open the session, you want to introduce yourself, welcome everybody, uh, introduce the name and the number of the session. So for those people who uh, want to make sure that they know where they are, and then remind people that, um, that uh, to keep to time limits and, um, uh, professional etiquette throughout is expected. Um, and remind people also uh, to provide feedback and questions using the question and answer period. And so uh, a little bit more about that. Um, not only can people uh, ask questions, uh, write them, but uh, other audience members can say, oh, that's a particularly good question, or even comment on those questions. Um, there may be more questions than there is time to uh, answer, and so it'll be your job as the uh, chair to, to speak them, uh, to, to uh, choose which question you want to ask you, uh, which question should be asked and to, and to speak them out loud. Um, and um, you want to keep these introductory and opening remarks really just to, to a minute or two. Um, it's, um, it, we want to get, we want to keep on, on time and, and we'll say a little bit more about that. But what you as chair will want to do is have a separate timer, either a cell phone app or uh, your watch or uh, whatever, whatever is most convenient for you so that you can keep a close uh, mark on the time. So keep, uh, speaking of the time, <clears throat> most oral sessions will be 10 minutes long, uh, which is to say five minutes for the presentation, three minutes for the question and answer, and two minutes for the transition to the next speaker. Um, some people are giving dissertation talks that will be marked uh, on the list of talks that you have. They have 15 minutes for the presentation and then three minutes for questions and two minutes for tr transitions. Those are the regular uh, parallel oral sessions. For special sessions, those are organized, those are arranged by the organizers. And uh, for plenary sessions, uh, those there, it's um, a few minutes of introduction, then 40 minutes for, this, for the uh, plenary session and then uh, whatever time is left over in a 50 minute block uh, for questions. So um, staying on time is really quite important. We have many parallel sessions going on at once. As you know, people will look at the schedule and hop from one session to another uh, as they try to get one talk or another. That means that uh, they are taking seriously uh, the times that are listed for the start of each talk in turn, which means that you, you are responsible for keeping the session running uh, according to the schedule. 
Um, we'll, tr we'll do everything we can to avoid holes in the schedule. I think um, if someone withdraws uh, a week before, a few days before, we should be able to fill up, fill up those holes and readjust the schedule. But, uh, but uh, if somebody simply doesn't show up, rather than just moving forward with the next talk, which of course would throw the whole schedule off, use that opportunity to have, have some discussion. It'll have to be led by you verbally, uh, but, um, but the, uh, the people in the audience will have to use the Q&A uh, uh, button. Again, we hope that, and we don't anticipate many, many holes in, in, the, um, in the schedule. So we're, 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 um, we think this will be a fairly rare occurrence. So, and, and certainly uh, uh, do not change, not only should you not move talks earlier, but do not change the order of the talks. Um, again, it is your job uh, as speakers to keep people on time is to alert people, uh, alert the speakers of the time. And, uh, and again, it's your job to keep, keep an eagle eye uh, on the, the time going forward. So to say a, a few words about that, um, use the private chat window to, uh, to signal to the speaker four minutes to go. This again, the chat window will be seen by the speaker and not, not by the audience. Um, four minutes, I'm sorry, four minutes are up, meaning one minute to go for a contributed talk, and uh, at 13 minutes, two minutes to go for a dissertation talk. Uh, and they, again, this, this um, a button will light up and, and uh, that they will see that. Um, they should you, if, if it's now five minutes or 15 minutes and the speaker is, is not clearly wrapping up, it's time to say again, uh, your time is up and please, please finish. If, if, the, if they really will not stop, and this does happen occasionally, um, well, you have to be a little bit more aggressive. Unmute yourself and you can interrupt them and say, the time is up. Um, I, um, usually people <laughs> will be very good uh, at that point and, and um, you will not have to be overly aggressive there. Um, but again, the, the, the spirit of this is to keep, keep on schedule. So. Again, um, this is somewhat repetitive, but if the question, you know, if, uh, if, uh, if the questions uh, finish a little earlier, then uh, think of another question, continue the discussion, or just wait uh, until uh, the time for the next person uh, to speak comes along. So uh, all AAS uh, attendees have, have, been, have been advised and indeed I, I think have formally agreed to the AAS code of conduct, uh, but it is your job as, as chair of a, of a session to enforce those ethical st standards. Um, so it, one can imagine that occasionally uh, in, inappropriate question is asked via the Q&A window. As, as chair, you have the prerogative to, to select um, uh, which Q and A, which question uh, questions to ask? If there are questions that are, I mean, probably the simplest thing to do will be to just the first first question that comes up, um, uh, read that one out loud. But if there's a question that seems inappropriate, bullying, off topic, um, or otherwise um, uh, not appropriate, it is completely within your prerogative to skip it. Uh, and if it really looks pro uh, seriously problematic, you can specific, you can and should say something to the effect of uh, this question is inappropriate and we are skipping it. <clears throat> One thing that you that you can do and uh, uh, is all I already mentioned uh, that you would let you should reach out to the speakers uh, beforehand. Um, um, in a, a few days before reminding them, uh, saying you're looking forward to the talk, make sure that you know how to pronounce their name. And uh, if that's unclear, you might ask them that specifically in the email. Uh, of course, again, when you introduce each speaker, um, provide their name, their affiliation, and the title of their contribution. Um, we've already mentioned that the questions will be asked through the question and answer period. At the end of question and answer, you thank the speaker again and start the transition to the next speaker. And of course, at the end of the whole session, thank all the speakers for, for, for participating and then you can formally close the session. So um, um, any, any speaker uh, and especially um, people uh, earlier in their career are, are likely to be nervous um, and so do be aware of that. Uh, be kind uh, in every way that you can. And one one kindness that you can do is to seek p 
people out after the talk. Um, there is a networking lounge. It's all done virtually here, but there's a networking lounge where you can find uh, uh, other people at the AAS and you can, you can go out of the way to try to engage speakers uh, that were in your session and, and um, you know, tell them that was a good talk or, or, or perhaps also send them an email uh, after it's all over, just thanking them for their presentation and saying that you enjoyed what you heard. These, these things can, can be a big deal for well, early career astronomers, but indeed uh, those of us who may be a little bit more senior uh, appreciate those things as well. So uh, one thing that you should know is that the AAS has a formal embargo policy, which is to say that uh, the findings of any, any scientific findings, um, the embar any embargo is officially lifted at the time that the presentation starts, which is to say um, that you may have in your audience um, people who are uh, live blogging the, the talk or um, our reporters or other such things. And that is all perfectly okay. And so that's one thing that you should know. There's a full link to the detailed um, embargo policy if, if you're curious about that. So uh, that's, that's basically it. Thank you so much for volunteering to chair. Um, should we find ourselves doing a virtual meeting again, we'll be recycling these slides. Any suggestions on this presentation, or for that matter, suggestions on improving the, um, the meeting format overall are welcome anytime. You can send it to any of the three of the AAS vice presidents, myself, uh, Michael Strauss, Joan Schmelz, and Jeffrey Clayton. You can see the three of our email addresses here. Thank you so much.